Hey everyone, uh, Douglas Peak here. I have been a pastor at a church in Boise, Idaho by the name of Foothills Christian Church for over 24 years. And so I'm finally doing something that I wanted to do for a long time, and that is kind of help give people some specific tools on how to navigate all the crazy things that are happening in our world today. Now, one of the reasons why I'm able to do this is because we're in the midst of a global pandemic. That's right, it's across the entire globe. And it is today, April 1st, 2020. And if you're quarantined in your house, you can only you know, make so many TikToks or wash your dog or clean and reorganize your closet. At some point, you begin thinking about life and you begin to think about your life. And I've been getting a lot of questions about life right now. I mean, as a pastor, I get lots of questions. That's kind of what we do. But right now they're going through the roof. And one of the reasons why is because there are so many different voices out there saying a lot of really different and sometimes bizarre things. Everyone has a YouTube channel. Uh, everyone has a different opinion on their YouTube channel, a different interpretation of what is going on. And people are thirsty for answers right now. And because of that, there's so many different voices. It's important to learn how to know who you should listen to and why you should listen to them. I've heard people tell me, you know, this is the uh, God's wrath being poured out because of, you know, fill in the blank, some reason. I've had other people say, no, this is just God judging the world. I've heard other people on, say things like, well, this is the end times and you need to expect tribulation because this is proof of it and God's told me when it's going to happen. I've heard people say, no, this isn't the end times, but if you have enough faith, God is your shield and you won't be touched by the virus. You'll never get it, so don't worry. Other people will get it, but you won't get it. I've had people ask me, is this the zombie apocalypse? Now, granted, those are people who are under 14 years of age, but still, I just want you to know, no zombies, okay? This is not the zombie apocalypse. Now, in all seriousness, I want to get started on giving you some tools on how to discern truth from myth, fact from fiction. And I'm not interested in telling you what I think. What I'm interested in doing is helping to coach you and to train you up so you can figure out for yourself and discern what's really happening. So let's get started. And in order to do that, though, we need to have some ground rules or what I call Basic principle number one, legitimacy. It's a very important question to ask if we're going to have a guide, do they have any legitimacy to guide us? That's an excellent question. You should always ask that question. So just to help you understand a little bit about me, I wanted to give you some of my background, okay? Number one is uh, I was ordained into the ministry, full-time ministry on June 5th, 1988. This is my ordination certificate. Now, I graduated with my Bachelor's of Arts degree in 1987. So after I graduated, I went and I worked at this church for a year before they would ordain me into the full-time ministry. So what does that tell me to you? I have a four-year degree in Bible and ministry from an accredited college. I then, a year later, was ordained into the ministry. So I've been doing this for approximately 33 years. Now, I didn't stop there. I kept going. What happened is uh, in 1997, I was uh, hooded with my Master of Arts degree in Christian Education uh, from Friends University in Wichita, Kansas. My bachelor's was at Manhattan Christian College in Manhattan, Kansas. And then what I did is in 1996, 97-ish, I started my doctorate of ministry degree, and that took about six, seven years to complete. It was a long, arduous process. And I was hooded in 2003 uh, at the Northwest Graduate School of the Ministry. So what does it tell you? Well, what it tells you is that not only have I been doing full-time ministry for a long time, 
but uh, I have also continued my education. And what getting an education does is it kind of uh, shows you what you don't really know and it tempers you. So not only does experience give you wisdom, but education as you pursue it helps temper you, especially once you get out of your bachelor's and you start going into graduate levels. And uh, so I, I share that with you, not because I'm trying to boast or anything, just to let you know that this is my background and this is what I believe allows me to speak wisely about these subjects. And so I hope that helps give you confidence that I can be your guide. The second thing I'd like to share with you is that I'm not here to tell you what to think. I don't have this predetermined little idea and matrix and I'm just going to sit here and try to convince you to see everything my way. I am here to show you how you can determine what is true and what is not true. I, I, I approach it this way. I'm attempting through these little videos to turn you into a discerning person, a wise person, a person who has the tools within themselves to discover the answers that they need right now. It's kind of the old thing, don't give a person a fish, teach them to fish. It's kind of like that. When it comes down to it, you see, this is about your faith. It's about your journey. I want you to discover your faith. I want you to walk in your own faith and I want you to experience the power of a dynamic faith in Jesus Christ. And so I want these to be your convictions, your uh, foundational stepping stones on which you step. Therefore, what I'm hoping to do will only appeal to those who want to think about it, who want to learn, who want to sharpen their discernment skills and grow wise. Uh, if you're a person that uh, just wants somebody to tell you, this is what's happening, believe me, trust me, then I'm probably not your guy. But if you are the kind of person who wants to grow wise, if you are the kind of person who likes to think and likes to be challenged and you want to sharpen your discernment skills, then we're going to begin together by digging into this and growing our faith together. So now that we have our ground rules out of the way, let's get started. Okay, let's focus on the first stepping stone in becoming a discerning person, a wise person that allows us to navigate what's going on in the world and understand what God is doing. And so that first stepping stone is called a worldview. Now, if you don't know me, I just want you to know I'm a big fan of whiteboards. Love whiteboards because I'm kind of a visual guy and whenever I write stuff down, it just helps me kind of organize thoughts. And so I'm hoping it does the same thing for you. Now, what exactly is a worldview? Where a worldview is a template by which we view the world and then we make uh, judgments or conclusions about the world based on this template. Okay, so you could kind of say it's like a pair of glasses. What it does is it brings the world into focus for you. Everybody has one. You have one, I have one. Every person has a worldview. The key to being a discerning person is to understand your worldview and understand how it influences your perceptions. Now, what does a worldview do? Well, the worldviews are basically uh, an amalgamation of, of our personal answers to the following questions, okay? At some point in our life, we ask ourselves a question, is there a God, yes or no? Some people are like, no, there is no God. Some people say, well, there is a God. Well, that really forms a significant portion of your worldview. Uh, another one is this, is what is real? Now, it's interesting is people don't step back and go, oh, is this real or not real? Unless you've seen the Matrix movie, you know? Uh, but really what it is, is when we, we've answered that question, this is what's real, this is what isn't real. Case in point, is love real or not? Is honesty real? Is commitment and loyalty to a person, is that real or not real? Well, that drives our worldview. You see how we interpret what's going on in the world around us. The next one is this, what is the basic point of your life? We, we've tried to answer that, and sometimes we feel lost, and when disruptions like this happened, it really is confusing. But in essence, when you look back on your life, you were making decisions, whether consciously or subconsciously, that 
were based upon your worldview, and your worldview included your answer to that question. Well, this is the point of my life, you know? For some people, they answered that question by saying, well, the point of my life is to, ple- is to have pleasure. And so they just want to have a good time, and they just want to go through life, you know, just having a good time. Uh, Now, there's other people who've asked the question, what my main goals in life are? What are they really? Well, the goals you set are influenced by your worldview. Is the world fair or unfair? Is, uh, how do you know who are good people or not? I mean, what is good? You see, subconsciously, you have answered that question and that makes up your worldview. Now, this is very important to understand because the last question is this, is there evil? I mean, is there injustice in the world? And if there is, then where does it come from? And how do we know if something is unjust or not? I mean, how do we know that? So these types of questions we have asked ourselves at some point, either consciously or subconsciously, and that has made up our worldview. And in order to understand what's going on and become a discerning person and a wise person, you have to understand your own worldview and how it influences and impacts uh, all of your perceptions of what's going on right now. So my challenge for you is this, is to really begin to evaluate and think about your worldview. And here's a secret. Most of the time, our worldview was formed in high school. That's right. That's where a lot of our adult beliefs about these questions came from and were formed. And so the time as an adult is, it says in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, you know, there was a time when I was a child. I acted like a child. I thought like a child. We could say there was a time when I was a teenager. I acted like a teenager, thought like a teenager. But there comes a time when we must become adults. And so we have to put away childish things. So step one of this journey together, of you becoming a discerning person, you becoming a wise person, you owning your own faith, and you figuring out what God is doing in this world starts with understanding your worldview. So, ask yourself these questions. Go back, rewind the video, ask yourself these questions, and then write down your own answers in your own journal. So here is the end of this lesson. And my challenge for you is to really think about it and then try to internalize it because we're going to be setting stone after stepping stone after stepping stone. They really build on each other. So let's set a firm foundation. Thanks for joining me and thanks for uh, being a part of this journey. I'm pretty excited about it and I have a great hope for you.